again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And it's March! Woo! <laughs> Springtime! Yeah. It's almost here. It is. It's, gore. it's gonna be like almost 60 today, which is bizarre. Um, I, I have a great mailman at my old house and at my office, and um, he's in the same boat as us. He's like, I think it's over. I think, I think the groundhog was right. I think we might have actually, <laughs> um, we might actually be really having an early spring, because even if we had a huge snowstorm now, it's March already. It's over, yeah. I mean, there's like nothing on the ground. No. I'm, I'm very excited. I My am, puppy loves it. We've been, you know, yeah. hiking, walking, all the good stuff. Dan rode his bike the to, the to the bank yesterday, you yeah. know, which give him a chance to ride the bike. And there you go. Um, so last week yes. we uh, forgot to wrap up about that fire engine crash yes. that is going no. to cost the city a, a million lot. bucks. That's what we were talking about. Um, so there was back on, it looks like at the last week of February, there was a huge crash where um, two fire trucks collided with each other and then with a uh, pickup <laughs> truck of a private person. Um, and they're estimating that the cost could be like, one and a half to two million dollars to replace these two trucks if they have to and um and and that was like right after a wake for well, a that's a, that, a, okay a, a, someone yes. a, who passed away a fire a volunteer fi or a firefighter no, he was, was 25 years old he passed away in his home um, as far as I could figure out, I, they, Grant, don't they don't why, say why, they just said, it, which uh, seems weird, right? Because 25 is pretty young. So that right. seems like it, it must says, have been um, something. Firefighters responded to a report of cardiac arrest and ineffective breathing at, to, at his home. And I thought, I have weird concerns. I'm not anti-firefighter. Let's start no, with that. No, I mean, I, no. Maybe, we're I, talking about things maybe that are sometimes, in the city. Right. Maybe um, sometimes that this sounds like, you know, like, you know. No, the Here. reasons I want to talk about this is, is twofold. One is the hypocrisy that we have enshrined in our first government. And especially with first responders and teachers and right. all of it, right? Anything pretty much that's unionized. I mean, I would yeah, say there is this, a correlation yeah. there. But this sort of idea where we understand that this was an accident, yeah. right? The, an expensive accident. Yes. I beg the question to be like, well, is anyone going to be held at no. all accountable for this? Because, you know, when people make accidents, then, you know, they, they, they get punished. Well, and so I the question becomes, you know, should we at least, you know, be looking at punishing, uh, well, you know, the, the people when <laughs> private, you know, I did take some time. I couldn't find, I'm not even sure anymore. I'm not sure if we actually have a new firefighter contract that went into effect in October or if that, I think that Alderman did, but I Googled and I was only able to find the one that went through 2017. So I will admit that this is not the current contract, but I'm going to guess that most of the stuff stays the same or increases. Um, there is a section on indemnification. Um, it says the city of Manchester currently purchase li purchases liability insurance, which I'm not, they pro we're still self-insured. There is no... We have an insurance plan, but right. we fund it. I mean, it's oh yeah, the you know, taxpayers of the city pay for it. Right, it's, it's like, not uh, like we Primex or right. You know, well, whatever. there's somebody that manages our insurance, but that doesn't mean it's not like a regular insurance policy that you know a business goes out and buys a policy from Concord Group Insurance, and then Concord Group Insurance pays if there's a claim. In Manchester, we're self-insured, which would mean um, if we have. If there's something that the city has to pay, it processes through that insurance company, but it still comes out of the dollars in the city. Okay. We are self-insured. There is no magical insurance company that covers our, our claims. We cover our claims. We do the same thing with our health insurance. Oh, interesting. Right. So it's, it's weird. Why? Like, well, because it's probably in the bigger picture, it might be more affordable because of the size of our pool of things no but i mean insurance companies actually i mean the way it works is because their pool is so big is i don't why know the premiums i mean down. we've been we've been self-insured as long as i can remember i know god probably a decade ago now we had a tree fall from city property that they we had told them was damp like this tree's dead and it's gonna fall and then it fell and took out you know my deck and my fence and everything and i had to really argue with the city at the time to get them to pay the for some of the damage, not even all the damage, for some of the damage, because it was a tree that, but we had given them the heads up. If we hadn't given them the heads up that the tree was gonna fall, but we did, and they did fail to take it down, and then it fell. Um, but I remember that 
it was a big deal because it comes out of the tax dollar. It comes out of the because money. one of the changes I would actually love to see, and this is certainly something that you know people should start to consider, is um, you know how, like how doctors and lawyers have carry professional insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, our, our uh, first responders, our police, I, I, they should yeah. all carry personal liability insurance. Why? Because that would create an incentive to not for better <laughs> behavior because we actually have the opposite of that currently, right? We have created a system with our uh, local government that creates incentives to, to push support the bad right. behavior. Right. Uh, what do I mean by that? So if, you know, if someone, uh, you know, if there's a, if there's an accident like this, right. right? Like if you knew you were, you might be held personally liable, maybe even if you have your flashing lights on and your light is green. Right. And so, I mean, someone there, if they so, were coming from two I'm pretty sides, sure one, in the fire one, of, one of them was green, right. one of them was red, I, but both of them thought they have magical rights. That means that well, they can just go. You know, and here's the thing about the fire, the fire trucks. Let's just think when you hear sorry, and you see red lights, you're supposed to pull over to let them go by. We all know this, right? You know, you don't just keep driving because they have to get by. I get that. I'm not, you know, I get it. Actually drives me nuts when people like, you're like, dude, you have to pull over <laughs> this truck. Because if, if they're coming to your house, you want them out of the way. What it does seem that happened in this case is um, the one that was coming up, what is that, Maple Street? Just based on, uh, you can just look at recreation. You don't have to be, a, you know, a forensic detective you, yep. if somebody's coming up this street and another fire truck is coming up this street this one either ran into the side of this one which hit the black truck or this one turned and this one but i think it was this way mm -hmm. i think the one coming up maple made the turn onto bridge street without real somehow didn't notice the giant red fire truck with its lights and it's like and I mean, if you're taking two different routes to a fire, I mean, I, I would hope that this is something you've you've been trained on how not to do. And I mean, it could just be a fluke accident. Who the you know? We're never going to know because they're never going to report the details of what was actually. Because with, you know uh, how I think it's the union leaders uh, that slogan is you know. Uh, uh, light shines on yeah, the truth yeah. and you know all the newspapers have these beautiful words but that talk about talk. transparency and openness and how that fosters a, you know healthy societies and stuff but then we've somehow created this relationship between us the people the government works for that is like oh no they're you allowed to keep to. any secrets right. they want from us because oh don't be bothered little right. citizen you don't need to worry your pretty little head about what we're doing here in the darkness so in this case so back to the indemnification for a second so in the, the granted this is the two the prior contract but it says the city of manchester currently purchased liability which co includes coverage of liability of public officials and employees for actions taken as part of their official duties while employed by the city for Furthermore, on the 25th of November, 1975, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen acted under the provisions of RSA 31105 by voting to indemnify and hold harmless for loss or damage any person employed by the city while acting in their official capacity. Such action by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen protects officials and employees of the city for the deductible amount of liable liability insurance. So. So, okay. Okay, and I'm actually fine with contractually having indemnifications, right? So that part makes sense to me. Here's the part I have issues with, and that is qualified immunity. What is qualified immunity? Qualified immunity is literally a, a legal doctrine that says, uh, you know how they say to us, uh, ignorance of the law is no right. excuse, right? So right. like, even if, if you, you didn't do know something was illegal, they're going to be like, you were supposed to know it was illegal, so we're going to hold you liable right. anyway, right? So that's how that works with us. So qualified immunity, which only applies to the government, to state employees, yeah. says ignorance of the law is no excuse, except if you're the enforcer of the law, meaning the police or EMTs or, you know, whatever, um, <laughs> unless you're the enforcer of the law, then it is an absolute defense. So just to be really clear for folks at home who might be like, what? <laughs> People who work for us are literally held to a lower standard of responsibility, of responsibility than, than any of us. So before I go to here. So going back to the firefighter that died, 
I feel like we're jumping all over, but there's so, it's just this I mean, weird, it's a little, this oh. is a tangly weird thing. There's just so many issues. First of all, I'm looking at it this way. We have a 25 year old firefighter who suddenly suffered from cardiac arrest and ineffective breathing. He's 25 years old. So my, the spidey sense in me says, who the hell dies at 25 suddenly like that? Who has a cardiac arrest at 25? So maybe there was an underlying health concern. But you're a firefighter. Do we not know if our firefighters are healthy? I assume. I mean, that I'm, the people I'm assuming that were, they do medicals a year, every annual. I don't know. Or, I'm, you know what I mean? Know. I mean, I'm not. I feel terrible. Some 25 year old guy I mean, and his family, tragic. you know, died, and that's a tragedy. And, and I'm the, not, I mean, the I'm accident say, was tragic. Right. All accidents I, are tragic. You, it's not specially tragic. Because you do wonder, like, okay, so. Does anybody else find it peculiar that a 25-year-old firefighter died of cardiac, maybe of cardiac arrest, maybe not? Well, you know, there are there are um, things that contribute to random people having death. Um, I mean, one of them is steroid use. Stero that springs to or, mind. Um, uh, 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 you know, we, I mean, it could be an overdose. I'm not saying that this was. I'm just saying there are questions that I think are legitimate. Well, and the thing is, you know, if we're forced to speculate because the Th why truth don't we isn't just know? coming out, why don't they just you know, report that that poor firefighter died of, of you know he of X Y and Z? Because and you be know, like, oh. if if you're not telling us, I don't know. My spidey sense is like, well, what well, are you hiding? In also in the union contract, because you mentioned something about if you're called out, and I couldn't find that. That could be in state law. I'm gonna. I didn't have. A chance to really look and and what tammy's referring to is last week i said i read in the newspaper recently probably in the last six months that if a firefighter dies uh within 24 hours of a call out even though it could have been at home or in a car right. accident or any random thing but if you are if you pass away within those 24 hours then you are regarded as having died in the line of duty and so you get all those Well, I do see in stuff. the contract, this is the old contract, uh, the life insurance benefit, um, it, the city will provide for a life insurance fund to provide a payment of a death penalty in the amount equal to the employee's last yearly base pay, but not to exceed $50,000 to the named beneficiary of a bargaining unit member who dies from any cause while employed by the city or who dies within 60 days after retirement or resignation for health reasons. So you could resign your position and then die four months later and the city of Manchester would still have to pay uh, $50,000 out. But um, in the city reserves right to obtain insurance coverage for the above mounts and reserves the sole right to select the carrier. So there is that, that, so now this 25 year old, and I'm not saying that he shouldn't get some sort of life insurance benefit, it's his employer, but you don't even have to die this isn't just like a health life insurance benefit that the average person, you know, you get through your employer. This is saying, we're gonna pay you 50,000 whether you died in the line of duty or you just die. So if we're gonna say, we're gonna pay you $50,000 if you just die, I would like to know that these people are healthy. That's just me. Okay, so we've got that. So that's about the guy. And then we got the trucks hitting each other. And uh, were they distracted? Was it the same day as the funeral? I don't know. It was all like kind of overlappy, same days. Um, I also found it weird, and I'm sorry, you can hate me for saying this. I find it peculiar that um, we shut down city streets to allow for certain individuals' this is funeral a new processions thing. and whatnot. And, and I will say this I think it's indicative of this sort of special reaction, right? Where we're creating this special class. The of special people. class of people, and they're all. Well, as you said, they all tend to be first responders, teachers, government officials. They're somehow different types of people. So when they pass away, instead of the funeral, I mean, I've been, I've I mean, I many. saw one, I think it was in Rhode Island or Jersey or somewhere. And it was a police officer who, if I recall correctly, like, had a heart attack. Like right. he didn't, you know, it wasn't, right. wasn't, it wasn't shot. some dangerous isn't situation. Isn't it like when Michael Briggs was killed by, yeah. No, and, and I mean, there were... Eight thousand it's officers in the stadium with their uniforms yeah. and you know if you kind of looked with half an eye and you made the photo black and white you it's know creepy. you you you'd be like is that america or is right. that i don't know maybe europe in the 40s yeah. you know it is, kind of, it is peculiar and i it, there is this brotherhood mentality 
Which is good in some ways, I guess. I mean, you're well, it's fine when you create a brotherhood, but then, but not when you create a brotherhood in order to create an us and them mentality. Mm. When one, I am paying your salary. Right. Two, you work for me. So that's the problem. So today, maybe you didn't see this. Man, this was in today's union leader. Or maybe it was yesterday. Yesterday's union leader. Manchester pays $36,000 to settle civil rights claim brought against the police. And I'm like, oh my God, here we go again. We keep paying out these settlements, which we probably have to do because it probably costs us more if we don't pay out the settlement. This one comes from the actions of a police officer. And I'm sorry, I don't want to hold you. I don't think this, you should be indemnified because this was not in the course of his work. We had a um, police sergeant who owned rental property who used his um, paid taxpayer paid position in the police force to harass one of his tenants. He was having um, detectives do background search, like he was well, using- Well, to clarify, so as I understood it, this guy didn't pay his rent and right. actually ended up getting evicted yes. out of the rental property, but then went somewhere else. And then the owner of the rental property, who also is a police officer, yep. I believe his last name is Knight. Knight. Um, then decided he still had a beef with this dude yeah, and, and then like, used the police to, to go harass, harass this dude. So right? this and so this is not, we're not making stuff up. This is a court thing. This there is was a legit a settlement, thing. You know. um, and I remember reading it and I was like, holy cow, that's so not right. So we settled, the, you and I, taxpayers in Manchester, paid the gentleman who was harassed $36,000. Um, this was from last summer. This was reported last summer. Uh, the police detectives who allowed Knight access to police reports and took it, his advice on the case eventually had charges of criminal mischief and felony witness tampering brought against the individual. Felony witness tampering. Imagine, I wonder if Mr. Knight is on our magical well, who secret knows? Lori's list. So the Hillsborough County prosecutors eventually dropped the case against this individual um, and pursued going after the police officer. But the problem for me is that um, we've got this police officer who's not, who's abusing his power, and that's what I'm gonna call it, his power in his job, yet we hold, we indemnify him because he's a city employee so he's not on the hook well, for thirty-six thousand. Well, but you see, he 000. shouldn't be indemnified, and this should not be. This is exactly why they should carry personal liability right, because insurance because he did something that was outside of the law, scope of yeah, outside of the law, and the scope of his job to do something that caused harm to somebody else. Now, what was kind of funny? I did look it up, and I was like, "Great, well." Well, um, I mean, I think the way that these contracts now work is nothing is beyond the scope well, of they, them because they will just protect each other for whatever reason. What cracked me up is police placed Knight on leave in 2018. Doesn't say non-paid leave, just leave. And he retired from his 21-year job three months later. So we're paying, we're still paying his um, his pension. He He... And now we're paying $36,000 more. And I did print it out, but I was not a print and my printer hates me. Um, to keep the peace, is that, that the last, part? <laughs> the 60, the, in 2018, when I looked up the f salaries, we Manchester paid out $62,000, which was his, his payout. So $62,000 in 2018, prior year he was making 109,000 as a police sergeant. So that means he's probably collecting um, a pension of about, Fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars a year, and now I have to pay thirty-six thousand dollars out of the tax money that we don't ever have enough of for all the things that everybody wants to pay for. But yet, this is where all it. Why? Because because we constantly are paying settlements. I mean, you we know, have, it's a project it's that I would love to see. I mean, it would be a lot of work. So if anyone ever wants to help me, definitely message us here on Manch Talk. But. Um, I would love to see someone figure out how much we are paying in the state of New Hampshire for these settlements. Right. So there's actually, if I recall correctly, there's a, there's a law that says these settlements are not supposed to be secret. Like I know when I right. when when I settled my my lawsuit against uh, the town of Weir, yeah. they uh, they actually tried to make me sign an NDA. They tried to make confidentiality so part of of the settlement. Um, and this was after I'd prevailed, of yeah. course, in, in my case, right? 
And I was like, no, because I'm going to write a book about this. (laughs) (laughs) I will not be gagged by you. And I recall looking into it at the time. Now, it's been 10 years and, you know, maybe I I have it wrong now. But there's this new trend towards trying to make these things confidential and to say that they are not specifically subject to 91A, that they're not. And and all of those things are completely not allowed (laughs) like what we need to be doing and 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 really like the you know if i could just drive this home for folks back home is we need our government to be responsive accountable to us yes that is how the relationship should work and you know it sounds like we we complain all the time but really what we're talking about is trying to restore that relationship to its its right foundations to say that you know we the people right and you provide us these services you know you know me i'm like government there's an app for that like all of these things could be actually provided for cheaper better uh by the market and um i just uh, it, it is frustrating because i do see this um this culture of the men of government mentality people just don't think about it now I'm not gonna. Let's talk a little bit about the coronavirus. You got this. You. I mean, people are. I. I I'm of the mindset, Carla, and I I'm probably like don't coronavirus. Agree. Right. Poor, the poor Corona Brewery. There are so many people. I mean, the Corona Brewery keeps having to put out statements that we have nothing to do with the coronavirus, and I'm oh, like, oh, poor guys. that's so sad. This is how people, and these people vote. Um. So you've got the mentality that people just take whatever the government says at their word. And sometimes, and, and I'm not saying the government's intentionally lying about the coronavirus. I'm not saying anything, but I mean, here it, it is an interesting example to see what information comes out, when the information comes out, and where this all goes. But I mean, even locally, you get people; they just get caught up. They don't. They stop thinking about if it makes sense you know when they say we need 22 in a nutshell that's our problem people stop thinking i I say to people all the time the role of the government of the city of manchester is not to be an employer and people go well what do you mean and they get defensive and i go it's not to provide jobs. jobs it is to provide services so that my taxpayer money is getting me something back for all the money I'm spending. So... And we spend, spend, spend. It never goes down. No. It only goes up. But can and someone tell me what the new magical services we right. have? Kids can read and write less than they could 20 years but I mean, ago, even but like, we're Even if, it, if you say it's the Parks and Rec or anything, like let's not even talk about teachers or firefighters or police. You say, you know, you'll hear, well, we need to hire three more, whatever. And you're like, do we... Do we really need three more? Because what are we getting for those three more? Or is this because we're moving people up the food chain in their job? So we need, now we need worker bees because these, be, you know. And I'm not thoroughly convinced that anybody outside of the people in those departments, I'm not even convinced that the aldermen know. Like, what do all of the people in any department in the city actually do for the taxpayer i you know what i would love to see i know we've talked about this before on the show i'm like so many projects i need volunteers but like could someone just give me a flow chart like a literal org chart with little bubbles of where, of, of where money goes yep. to whom and like even th- just for the opioid crisis like if we could just see because right. here's the thing we know government wastes an incredible amount of money. They're not good at we spending money. We don't even know what you know, they're wasting. They're not efficient. No. And it's not like they're going into it trying to waste. It's just a wasteful system. It just is. But you know why that is? Because, because not incentive not matter. And so if you create incentives that are, you're not responsible, you're not accountable, you can hide things. And there's a you secret pool of money secrets, that you can keep. You know, then, then obviously, I mean, it's just going to become a cesspool. Right. You know, I mean, it's, 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 we, I mean, it's of our own making. And so what we need is we need to shine the light. We need accountability. We need to hold these people accountable and we need to actually elect the right people. And that's us. By the way, <laughs> yes, I will be running. I know Carla's running for Senate. Um, Dan and I are both signing up to run for state rep again. If you live in Ward 10 and you have any questions for me whatsoever, by all means, <laughs> email or for Carla, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com because we would love to have a dialogue with more people. Um, Speaking of dialogues, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Granite State Progress oh, and the wondrous Zandra Rice Hawkins, uh, who, you know, 
as close She's disingenuous. to libel and defamation, which is probably why she won't let anyone record it. Right. Anyone who's interested can go to my website, CarlaGarrick.com, uh, to see the video, because I was happy with my rejoinder to actually have it recorded and put out there, uh, because I do believe in accountability and transparency. And, you know... She, yeah. just so you so, know, yeah, yes. a little background. <laughs> there, she, uh, Zandra Rice Hawkins works for Granite State Progress, which is an ultra left organization funded by all sorts of people outside of the state of New Hampshire. Uh, Zandra Rice Hawkins also moved here for that job in 2008, so she's a paid operative. Um, she hosts these events in various places to talk about the scary, scary things that are involved in the Free State Project. And she was hosting one in New Boston, um, and Carla went, and Dan and I went, a lot of people went. There were people from New Boston, there were people I mean, from- there were good seven because I was curious to see what she had to say mix of free staters and locals I mean and and you're right she skirts I mean she tiptoes around libel very very gently I mean I actually think if I was able to record it which I will do next time so here's the thing it's a uh, public event held in In a public public space which is a public library Um, so at the start of it she actually said which was very clever I'm willing to grant that. She said, uh, in New Hampshire is a dual consent state, which is true. And I don't consent. And I do not consent to being audio or video recorded. Now, I didn't want to start the night off with a fight, but next time I'm going, I am taking my video cameras because you don't actually have the right to consent in a public uh, arena. So that one's not gonna work again. So- um, I walked away from there. I'm not a free stater. I really walked away from there. I'm not as aggravated now as I was that night. I was driving home and I'm like, I'm gonna have to write a letter to the editor because it was that absurd. It was insulting. Well, I mean, it's insulting if you are a well, free theater and you're like, really, you're gonna is... take things that are 10 years old. Uh, the, the presentation itself was so old that we, uh, that the slides she was using were from like, I think the two iterations ago website yeah. and then somewhere from an iteration ago and it's like, well, I mean, we updated that website maybe three years well, ago. And it, it was so. interesting. It, um, it, a little bit of tidbit. So there were a bunch of people, not a bunch, there were a couple of people um, from New Boston who happened to be free staters, which I don't know. They're her, one of her big gripes is, why aren't people disclosing it? And I asked her, I said, so are they supposed to tattoo that on their forehead? Because I'm not understanding why well, anybody someone- has to disclose every single aspect of their life when they run for office. I mean, it's one thing if somebody says, are you a free stater? And you say no, that's different. But if you're running for office and you think, what am I going to put on my my I mean, literature? I, you're going to say, well, I'm going to put that I I have kids. I'm going to say I'm a sports coach. I'm a this, I'm a that. You, what drove you to come to New Hampshire? Well, I mean, let, let's go further We're with the McCarthyism. Is, We're going to run out of time. We are. We only have a minute. Oh, okay. Okay, so, so that's <laughs> another episode. Go to my um, website and maybe, get all the details. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's March. Um, I didn't bring anything about anything exciting going on. Not this uh, this Sunday. There's a great event at uh, Brookside Congregational Church called um, Bowls for Food or something. It benefits the um, oh the pottery. Yep, it's twenty five dollars a person. You get a, a custom little pottery bowl and soup, and it goes to the food bank. Um, that's this Sunday, the eighth at Congress uh, Brookside Congressional Church, and then next Saturday is Free Second Saturday at um, Courier. So Courier.org. That's all we got for this week. Email us mantalk at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook. Um, thank you for tuning in if you did and we will be back hopefully in another spring week bye